Rachel Woods, and I'm still a senior, and I still go to Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> when I was in first grade, my teacher made a game of lining up at the door. Line up at the door if you have a dog, or if you can spell your name, or if you have blonde hair. Line up at the door if you're an only child. When I asked her to clarify, she added, line up at the door if you're the only child who lives in your home. Now, to me, these were two different questions, but to her, there was only one answer. I was torn between my seat and the exit. This wasn't supposed to be a hard question, but when your brothers have always lived over an hour away, can you really say you grew up with siblings? Can I call myself their sister when I barely remember their birthdays? Have to do the math in my head to figure out their ages, but just like in statistics class, I'm usually only right about 50% of the time. I never thought family would become my worst subject. If only they came with the study guide, but if it was up to me to write it, it'd be about as empty as our photo album. Neither of them would care if they could never make another memory with me again, because when they can so easily forget my existence, why should they care if I lost it? I asked if they'd come to my graduation, and it's not like I'm surprised they declined the invitation. It's basic mathematics. Two brothers make one whole family, add in a half-sister, and everyone is divided. There is no lowest common denominator when we don't even share a last name. But I don't regret not growing up next to them, even though I feel like I should. I don't wonder what our life would have been like if I saw them more than I did our holiday decorations. Our relationship surely wouldn't have been anything more than half-remembered video game references and awkward conversations about movies. Right? Our connection clearly couldn't have been deeper than fighting over the computer. But even with everything, they're my brothers. The ones who didn't know they have stockings hanging up at a house they've never lived in and now a home they've never set foot in. The ones who I always argued with to get their attention because it's the only time they would listen to me. They'd trap me in headlocks to prove their strength and were always so quick to remind me I'd never be good at anything I tried. I still don't know if I believe them or not. I asked one of them if he'd miss me if I died, and he said, no. Line up at the door if you're an only child. This wasn't supposed to be a hard question, but as I lined up at the door, it became the only one in elementary school I remember failing. Yeah.